Hi, I'm Mako Fujimura. I'm an artist and um, I'm here in my Princeton studio and I'm happy to address you from uh, afar, uh, wherever you are, and i um, grateful for uh, Dr. James Jordan for have invited me to this conversation. Um, today I want to speak to you as an artist um, and, and someone who has been um, indebted to the Japanese tradition. Um, I, as you can see, my works resemble 17th century limpa screens uh, using gold and silver and precious minerals. Uh, here's a beautiful lapis that, that I use uh, to create um, this refractive surface, uh, which is uh, different from a, 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 a typical layering that is done with uh, oil or acrylic or any other medium. And so I have been um, safely self-sequestered, which is not too unusual for me. So this uh, shutdown um, has meant that I get to spend more time in the studio, which is a uh, great thing. I have been broadcasting live or almost live from my studio regularly so you can get access to that on my youtube uh, of some of my thoughts today i wanted to address you as choir uh, directors or anybody interested in or participating in uh, choir uh, first, I want to address uh, the, the, the enormous challenges that face you today. Um, in order to do what you love, um, it, um, uh, it is at high risk today with this pandemic. And therefore, um, all of you must be in some way um, be feeling uh, frustrated in, in, in limbo. Um, of waiting to see how you can possibly get back uh, to singing together in person. Um, and um, I hope uh, in the near future that will uh, happen again. There's nothing more beautiful to me uh, than human voices um, being sang together in in a choir uh, to listen to that live is uh, one of my true um, joys and uh, I realize for many of you this has been a difficult season and um, unlike me who can be self sequestered and do, do my art for you it would be um, uh, not only impossible today but but dangerous and and so I first want to acknowledge um, that um, this has been a fractured time, not just with COVID, but with many other social issues um, pressing us in, into uh, perhaps a new uh, way of looking at things. I wanted to talk to you uh, as an artist uh, seeking uh, what I call generativity of creativity. What I, um, I wrote a book called Culture Care about the nature of generativity, um, which is, is an important word um, to me. I have inherited this from my father, who was an acoustics research pioneer, and um, his generative grammar theory, uh, which he learned from Noam Chomsky at MIT. I was born in Boston when he was doing his post-doctorate at uh, MIT with uh, Dr. Noam Chomsky. Uh, and to bring generative grammar into Japan was, was his task. So I grew up in an environment where uh, this um, realm of speech and hearing and acoustic sciences, the best scientists were at Bell Labs and Murray Hill when I was uh, growing up as a teenager. And uh, I, it, was, it was just a regular conversation to have about the nature of uh, and not, not just speech and hearing, but, but about music. All of these scientists had enormous interest in music. And so I grew up in that uh, environment. And um, I still think about my father who passed away several years ago. But um, I, I feel like uh, speaking to you today, I am I'm able to uh, think back on my time 
uh, with my father talking about uh, acoustics research and how human hearing and 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 even performances um, uh, he was fascinated with with music and especially in late, late in his life he uh, had this regained interest in Japanese art of no NOH theater uh, which has particular uh, uh, way of uh, singing um, uh, breaking up the uh, the rhythm intentionally to create this um, uh, fantastic um, realm that cannot be captured really with Alexa today. Uh, uh, most, most of the machine learning would not be able to handle the complexity of voice uh, um, projections that, that are done in no theater. And so I, I think about the limitations of science. I think about our time, as I said, the fractured time. And, and I, I wonder about um, what are some of the metaphors to lead us into generative creativity, uh, even when we are limited, even when we are um, physically apart. Uh, what can be done to promote uh, this way of thinking uh, that leads us into the abundance of creation rather than the scarcity of what we face today. So um, I have been la launching with a uh, Japanese Kintsugi master, uh, uh, Master Kunio Nakamura, this uh, thing called Kintsugi Academy, uh, as part of my effort to bring culture care into the world. And Kintsugi is a venerable Japanese art form of mending uh, broken ceramics with Japan lacquer and gold. And this developed uh, through Asia. Uh, we see evidence of, of early Kintsugi in 10th century in China, but it evolved and refined in Japanese tea tradition, uh, particularly with the aesthetic of Senno Rikyu of 16th century Japan, the tea master who was the greatest innovator and greatest aesthetic um, practitioner uh, that has given uh, this new uh, form to the, this uh, tea ceremony that was flowing through Asia into Japan. And uh, through his aesthetic, many things happened but one of the one of the things is uh, related to and probably um, is uh, inspiring me to do practice culture care in times of fracture, in times of terrific um, conflicts. Uh, Senno Rikyu in 16th century Japan was operating in literally war period. Uh, it is called Sengoku Jidai, war country period, um, which incredible uh, um, volatile time in Japanese history. All these uh, warlords were fighting for uh, to dominate and consolidate Japan and one dictatorial uh, force um, um, came out on top and um, Likyu, a man of peace, uh, a, a Zen tea master, uh, began to speak against this dictatorial force, particularly an in invasion to Korea. Um, and he paid uh, for this with his life. He was forced to commit uh, uh, harakiri, the uh, ritualistic uh, suicide, um, which um, he and many of his disciples ended up um, facing persecution and um, and they, they, because they stood against dictatorial forces. And we live in a time when we need to learn from this venerable tea master who actually changed the world, not by fighting, but creating an art form of peacemaking. And Kintsugi comes out of this tradition, not necessarily directly um, attributed to Rikyu, but many of the aesthetics of Rikyu of refinement in def defining Japan has created uh, this heightened sense of 
honoring the fracture um, and not necessarily trying to fix it, but mending to make new. So when we talk about kintsugi, the kintsugi bowl is a ceramic, let's say a tea bowl breaks, an important tea bowl with uh, some kind of history to it will break. Uh, families or tea masters will hold on to the uh, uh, to the that ceramic for multi generations, sometimes two three generations, and then they will have it mended by a kintsugi master. The resulting bowl, which has been mended with Japan lacquer and gold, is more valuable than the original. So uh, in, in my new book, um, Art and Faith, Theology of Making book, uh, coming out of Yale Press in, uh, early next year, I, I have a chapter called Kintsugi Theology, because I believe this, this is uh, one of the greatest metaphor that we can have in life toward generativity. Uh, to see uh, the fractures, see the brokenness that we experience in our lives um, as a genesis moment into something that is new, something that is um, even more valuable than it was before. So I have a sample here, uh, a Kintsugi box that I designed with, with the Kintsugi master. And uh, this has been uh, my recent journey. It was not just painting, but creating these boxes. And I want to show you uh, this uh, art form, which is wrapped in this beautiful uh, way of, uh, of course, the Japanese uh, have perfected this uh, refined way of um, creating uh, not just the object, but objects that surround it. It's, it's like an ecosystem. And here is a, um, a bowl that is uh, over 400 year, year old bowl uh, that has been fractured. Um, and Nakamura-san, the Kintsugi master, worked on this. You can, you can tell that it's been fractured in multiple places. And, and how the design of these, which looks like a tree here, um, is intentionally um, highlighting the fracture. So he's not trying to hide it or, you know, uh, to super glue it back together to pretend like it never happened. Um, he is literally making this part of the design and so James and I had conversations about this and and Dr. Jordan uh, says that this may be one of the greatest metaphors for creating a choir uh, creating a group of people who can sing without hiding the flaws perhaps but but pouring in mending with Japan gold and then and then the design of the gold to not just to patch it up but to create something new so so the resulting bowl is more valuable than the original that takes this intuitive leap to jump into the fractures and and the challenge that we face today both personally and artistically so in a collaborative art form that is choir, um, you have, you know, multiple ways of entering into fractures. Uh, whether it be personal, whether it be voices colliding in the air, whether it be uh, situations that you might be faced with as, um, as many uh, choirs uh, cannot sing today. We really have to have an, another way of thinking about this. What is it that we are learning? What is it that we can look at the, out of fractures of broken pieces? And how do we, as group of people, address it, not just to problem solve, but mend to make new? Um, and that, that is a task that all of us, 
artists are um, handed this this enormous opportunity today to do and you know we of course heard all these stories Shakespeare wrote King Lear in, in, um, in during the uh, the plague um, the you know the theater Stratford theater was built outside of London because they couldn't build it inside because of the plague and social realities that existed at that time so many times fractures and setbacks are opportunities for us to create something new uh, something that is enduring something that can last withstand the test of time and something that can outlast dictatorial pressures of 16th century Japan, 17th century Japan, <laughs> they lasted for 250 years until Meiji Restoration opened up the country. Tea ceremony, Rikyu's influence is still felt today. And of course, we have the nationalistic dictatorial pressures as well. So, so the two paths, the war path and uh, I, what I call culture care path. And how do we create together uh, ecosystem and culture of care and empathy and I believe that uh, choir is one of the fundamentally one of the most important forms that we have so so we, we have to get back to creating but right now while we are waiting for that moment this is a critical moment to examine the fractures and rather than being frustrated by the brokenness, uh, we need to create into that. So I want to talk to you. The title of this talk is called Yobitsugi. You might be wondering why well, I'm talking about Kintsugi. What's Yobitsugi? And Yobitsugi is this came out of Kintsugi tradition. But let's say you have a fragment of an important bowl like this bowl, which is uh, quite possibly uh, one of the uh, disciples of Rikyu, Oribe, uh, Furuta Oribe. Um, he had this very distinctive style, and I, we, the best I know is that it is from uh, 18th century Japan. But since this was fragmented and it cannot and, and it's missing several pieces, you can see up here, this is a completely different uh, piece from another bowl that they grafted into this. And yobitsugi means, yobi means to call into and tsugi means to mend. So yobitsugi is an art for, uh, uh, a kintsugi art form that is extending that metaphor to graft in right another piece from another possibly another time and you can even see this here in the corner this is a western uh piece from a stained glass window so somehow the the kintsugi master mended this knew that this process of mending can also create something new by by bringing in something western into uh, Japanese ceramic and as you know notice this is not done with gold but it's done with silver which has tarnished over time uh, they knew it would tarnish after 50 years or so so they use this river of silver here instead of gold to patch together different elements including western glass to articulate something about the original to honor Oribe's vision as a tea master so what can Yobitsugi do well master Kunio Nakamura has done series of Yobitsugi ceramics which connects pieces from India and Pakistan and and the shape of the broken edges of the two 
literally is the border shape of India and Pakistan. He did the same thing with UK and Scotland. He does the same thing with Japan and Korea. And I had this vision this year to bring him to Israeli-Palestinian border and to do Yobitsugi there as a, a simple gesture of peacemaking. We may not be able to do it this year, but um, um, at some point we will be there. Maybe you can come and sing there uh, with us. Patching together of different cultures, often at war, enemies, bringing a piece um, of ceramic from your enemy's territory, mending it together with Japan gold and uh, Japan uh, lacquer and gold is, is a sh symbolic gesture, but it's a powerful symbolic gesture. It allows us to see a world in which the brokenness and even enmity between nations can be an opportunity to create something new, something that is, is the vision of new creation. So that's why Yobitsugi can be such a powerful metaphor. Now today, in this virtual, remote uh, experience that we, we are having, there's another uh, potent um, indication how Yobitsugi can work. We are fragmented today with Zoom boxes, you know, uh, and <clears throat> we're trying to do our best by um, singing through them to coordinate these virtual choirs. <clears throat> but what if we were able to somehow reshape how we view ourselves and what our ind individual contribution may be to a choir in terms of yobitsugi, which is not just to replicate choir, but to create something new. Now, <clears throat> you might be asking, well, how do we do that? Like, what, what can that look like? Well, there's some indications, right? There's, there's been some very innovative ways of doing theater and choir, which has accentuated the limitations and yet created something new. But I think we're just beginning to think this way, right? Choir conductor, his or her job is to bring various individual elements together and create a collage, let's say, of a whole. So, you are doing something that is already uh, kind of yobitsugi, right? Uh, you're bringing two people, hopefully they're not enemies, but maybe they are, I don't know. Um, but it's quite possible to do something that in a time when we're struggling with uh, this racial divisiveness that, that, has, uh, that has been resurfacing over, over the years, but now is truly uh, the um, reality of our time. Racial inequality, uh, the, 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 the reality of brokenness. And isn't this a perfect opportunity to test to see if your peacemaking of conducting can be applied to true peacemaking of inequalities, bridging the gap, creating yobitsugi intentionally so, so that your choir, the voices that are coming out are intentionally and beautifully diverse. And so Yobitsugi is not just the form of mending, the shape, but it's the content 
right, of people's character, who they are inside the voices of their souls and their hearts, their communities, what their experience historically. Bringing that into the surface and creating this fantastic mosaic that creates a new vision for the world. And I believe that this is possible partly because of technology, but partly because of 2020. A friend of mine said 2020 is 2020. 2020, the most fractured, most um, devastating that we've ever, ever experienced uh, in our generation, certainly. But it has given us a 2020 20 vision for the future. It has given us time to reflect. It has given us time to create something new. To dare to think that art and music can reshape how these conversations will happen in the future. And I am excited to journey with you. I am excited to um, think through this together. I don't have the answers. Um, so it's a, it is in, in, in itself a collaborative um, asking to fundamentally uh, reshape how we view ourselves, how we view our art. And that is why uh, a visual artist is speaking to conductors and choir members. That is why I'm so excited to journey with Dr. Jordan and, and, and so many others at, at, at this panel. Um, excited to journey with you. <clears throat> Do check out uh, Culture Care Podcast. Um, it'll just come up if you look up Culture Care Podcast. Uh, do uh, check out uh, Kintsugi Academy. It's at Mark Academy Kintsugi, no space, on Instagram or on Twitter um, or Facebook. Um, so uh, come journey with us as choir members. Let's uh, be makers again of new creation. God bless you and thank you for listening.